Hi, it's Darren from SimNation again. Uh, just want to do a quick video. Um, this one will probably be pretty quick because for those of you who were online last night, you know that we did the first round of the live draft on our Draft Day Sports Pro Football 2023 League, which is WWPF. Um, it was a good experience. Uh, Frankie joined us, um, really enjoyed it, had lots of good engagement on his Twitch channel. Uh, so thank you all who were there. Uh, thank you all who put up your lists, and if you're interested in a great league, the draft is something that we do uh, probably a few times a year um, because we complete, I think on average, like a season every two to three months. Um, but it, it's just it's one of those really um, fun things that we do, and it's always a good it's always good to have Frankie on. Um, he's the formal commish along with Gary. Gary wasn't able to make it because he was out sick. Uh, but it's just it's a good time and I, I it's one of the things I enjoy because I am very analytical I love recruiting I love scouting I love the draft um, so um, I'm gonna do a quick recap of it and then talk about some other things real quick but if you're interested in joining our league we've had a lot of new owners come in it's great vibe in the slack channel uh, we do predominantly use slack but we do have other options but I I'm in the process of trying to link slack with discord so that way Whichever one you choose to use, your message will get through to the other people. Um, but yeah, just a phenomenally interesting night last night. Um, on some aspects, uh, Frankie and I were right about some things, and we were pretty wrong on other things. Um, for those of you who don't follow um, the WWPF, um, of course, it's an NFL-style league. Um, we have 32 teams, um, so there were 32 picks last night. Um, New York Giants had the number one pick, and I'll probably just go into the recap now. Um, and the big question going into the draft is who was going to be number one. Um, originally, I think the number one pick was probably going to be a quarterback, uh, probably um, McCulloch out of Central Florida. However, as the scouting went by, it was evident that McCulloch probably wasn't the same player or wasn't going to be the immediate player he was in college where he was, by all definitions, one of the great college quarterbacks, right? Um, we kind of started to look more like Danny Warfel than Tom Brady. Um, so uh, once that happened, I think Cable started to pivot to focus on his defense. And the real question then came would be, would who would be the number one pick? Would it be Eric Lab out of uh, Central Florida, who... Cable coaches Central Florida in SNCFL, or would it be Dennis Blue, who's out of Western Kentucky? Um, and as we did more scouting, more big boards, the consensus was that maybe Blue was a little bit more seasoned than uh, Lab. And then, uh, lo and behold, uh, before the draft, it was revealed that he was going to go with Dennis Blue. Um, and as you can see here, is I like this pick. Uh, he's got good speed. He can cover. Uh, he's a thumper. He's he's gonna wrap you up if he gets his hands on you. His endurance maybe is not where I would want it to be, but uh, he's got really good strength. The agility, eh, it's okay, but his intelligence is pretty high. Overall, it's just a good pick. Um, Gary's a big guy on leadership and work ethic, and that, I dinged him on work ethic actually. But he's got competitive fire. He's a team player and he's got good morale. It's just a solid pick um, for number one. Um, I know some people would have said that Wilmo Alvarez should have been probably the number one. But again, you're drafting for your team's immediate need, especially when you're paying almost $9.5 million for a player. Uh, Baltimore could have went one or two ways here. Um, I'm happy to see they went the way that they did. And of course, they have a new owner in Kev. And Kev is just moving and shaking and then actually has me a little bit worried about the AFC North because, of course, I have Pittsburgh. Uh, and... I have benefited from not having a strong coach in Baltimore for a while. Um, suddenly, now we've got apparently one, and now I'm going to have to up my game. But uh, he took who I thought arguably may have been the best player in the draft, uh, which is Wilmo Alvarez. You're going to see a, th a trend here with the Miami Hurricane players coming out. They are coached by Gary, who is a former commish Hill, but he also plays uh, in SNCFL. Gary has done a phenomenal job with Miami and it shows uh, with the talent. He's got really, really good speed um, and his hands are elite. He's got the motor to stay on the field. He knows his position well. 
He may take some uh, plays off. I, I think 6-1, he's a little short, but I mean, at the same time, there's not much to dislike about this guy. Maybe his agility could be better, but um, he's definitely going to be a day one uh, person and now has me contemplating me trying to go out and find a very fast uh, um, cornerback to be able to cover him. Um, the third pick was the CPU. Chris isn't around anymore, but um, this was a pick that I feel good about for them. He arguably got the best quarterback in the draft uh, this year. Uh, Burns is out of South Carolina. Um, he is as dangerous with his feet as he is with his arm. Now, his accuracy leaves a lot to be desired. Um, 68 is pretty bad, but this is a type of guy that I think is going to be really good. I mean, he can put the ball down in the field. He's smart. He's not going to cough the ball up a lot. Um, he definitely can run the ball, get outside the pocket for $8 million. He's a steal. Uh, he's not going to be your leader on the field. I think that's the biggest knock I had on him. But as you can see, I mean, he completed roughly about 58% of his passes, somewhere around there, for 12,000 yards, almost had 100 touchdowns. He played in the SEC, so he's played big competition. It's good. It's a good pick. Um, the big trade yesterday was, uh, DP essentially traded all of his picks to move up to number four, uh, with Houston, with the new coach JP, and he was hell-bent with Cheezle retiring unexpectedly that he needed a speed running back, and he got a really good one in Terrell Bryant. Uh, Terrell Bryant is, uh, we'll get past the selfish man-child, he, this guy, this guy's just a dick, right? I, Personality-wise, I don't want to be in the locker room with him, but you can't argue his skill. 97 speed means he's going to blow past a lot of people. Yeah, his hands are suspect, but, you know, the reality of it is if he's running past you and he fumbles the ball, he'll probably have enough time to catch the ball before on the ground before everybody catches up to him. Uh, his agility is off the charts. He's got good strength. He's not as bright as he could be, but he's a running back. Um, let's be honest about that. Um, I do think it's going to be interesting that I think that when he tries to renew him, he's going to ask for a lot of money. But again, DP is someone who pays that money for his running back because he values having a really good running back, and he's got a great one in Terrell Bryant, uh, who I, I, I would say is probably one of the top three running backs in the whole draft. Um, and then... We go to Indianapolis. Um, Indianapolis, if I remember correctly, is, uh, I think it's Rick. I'll, I'll double check that um, just to make sure. Um, but uh, he's a new coach. Um, really great energy off of him as well. Um, I, I, I have to say I'm really liking the new coaches that have joined the league. I, I think they're adding a lot of value almost immediately. Uh, Rick is one of those guys. Um, but... Uh, he went with the guy who could have been number one, Eric Lab. And again, as you can see here is speed, maybe not as good as Blill, but tackling not as good, but he's up there. And this is a guy you can put in your linebacker core day one, ask him to be the leader on that defense, and he's going to be it. Um, so I, I like this pick. Um, he's got good strength. Um, and of course, he's out of Central Florida. He had a good career with six sacks, eight interceptions. Um, so... You can't say enough about this, and he, he's worth the $8 million a year, in my opinion. Um, so we had two linebackers going in the top five. Um, can't remember the last time that that may have happened, but that, that's a good thing to see. Uh, the Redskins was an interesting pick. Um, I think it's going to be a good pick in the end, though. Um, so this is Udo. Um, Udo's one of our many uh, German players, uh, and I... Throughout the process, people have asked me about Mullis, and my biggest concern with Mullis is just I think he was a product of the system at Alabama, and it's a great system. So, But what you see here, <clears throat> while his arm isn't strong, his accuracy is not great, he's highly intelligent, he's got, good, he's got the moves to get out of the pocket. And I, I think with the right coaching and the right development, he's going to be a good player. Um, and you build the system around him, and you can see here is he was productive at Alabama. That is that is a really good stat line. So I, I think with how Udo plays, and I have the benefit of playing against Udo and WWPF and SNCFL, he's going to make this guy a star. So um, 
he may not start day one, but he may, and Udo just may deal with the growing pains of a rookie quarterback, but it's a good pick. Um, Eugene Tejada. I was happy to see Chicago didn't take a running back. Um, people who listened to the Twitch last night know I was torn about making the pick for Chicago because every year they draft a running back and they got arguably one of the best running backs in the game. Uh, so they went with Tejada, uh, who is someone I was high out of Cincinnati, speed demon, uh, very agile. Um, he's going to be able to keep up with the elite level wide receivers uh, and be able to make the cuts with them. Uh, not the brightest guy, so you may be able to fake him out. His hands aren't great. His tackling is actually pretty good for a cornerback. Um, but the thing I worry about with him is his endurance. Uh, I think that um, he could get hurt uh, over time, but he had 10 interceptions at Cincinnati. He returned two for touchdowns. He's he, he's a solid pick, and some would argue he may have been the best cornerback in the draft. Uh, I, I think that there's another guy who's slightly better than him, but... Um, very, very solid pick for Chicago, who, of course, is the CPU. Uh, Bio Ego was up next. Um, I, I, I want to be careful with what I say about uh, Jonathan Derrick. Um, I think he's going to be a solid tight end, especially in Bio Ego's system. He's a good blocker. He's got great hands. He's agile. He's strong. Uh, and he has speed. So... Um, I think that, from my perspective, I, I think this is a solid pick. So um, maybe not worth the $6 million right out of the chute, but time will tell um, with him. Uh, there weren't a lot of great tight end options that were flagged by the computer in the first few rounds. Uh, I think that um, Jonathan Derrick was probably the best that the co computer said would be uh really good in the first few rounds. I'm higher on a couple other tight ends, and I think Frankie was too, but um, it'll be interesting to see. He's got a good foundation to build from. Um, I've seen uh, tight ends with 72 speed do really well in the right systems, and again, it's a matter of a system. Um, Joe Davis, this was a CPU pick. Uh, really good defensive end. Um, I'm high on strength and speed. He can tackle uh, his agility is a little suspect, uh, so he might not be able to cut and get in uh, against someone who's got good agility as a tackle or a guard. But just a solid pick out of Texas. He had a decent career there as well, 30 sacks. Um, so he's a speed rusher, which means he's probably only going to get faster. Um, so I, I, I like this pick. He was one of my top defensive ends in this draft in um, as you notice, there's a definitely a defensive theme to the first 10 picks. At 10, this is CPU again. Uh, I, I think Peyton Goodwin, I've talked about him a few times now. Again, he's a system guy. If you build the right system for him, I think he's going to be a really good quarterback. He's just not going to make long throws, but you don't have to if you have fast wide receivers. So I think Tampa Bay got arguably a one of the better accurate quarterbacks in this draft. Um, he's highly intelligent. He's got great accuracy. His arm isn't great, but it's not horrible. And like many, he has agility and speed, so he can get out of the pocket and he can make things happen. And he's out of Florida State, who uh, is a good team in SNCFL, and the ACC is competitive, so he's played good people. Um, sorry. That's my train of thought, though. Uh, Miami, this is so, uh, uh, I like this pick for him. Um, I think he's stacked at guards. I didn't expect him to take a guard, but uh, Alex Strong is arguably a guy that uh, you just don't pass up, and he's worth $6 million. You can see that here. He's really strong. He's got good agility. His speed is good. He's smart. Uh, he's a great run blocker, uh, so he likes to run the ball, and his pass blocking is only going to get better, and he's got all the good traits uh, that you want to see in a guard, especially at pick 11. So this was a really good pick. It's one of my favorite picks of the draft. And even though he's going to have some uh, depth chart issues with too many people at guard, he, you could move this guy maybe to a tackle or center, and he's going to be pretty good. The only thing is you're going to have to deal with the fact that he's played neither of those two. I, I would almost move someone else, not him. Um, so great pick, Soa. Um, the Buffalo Bills... Uh, 
they're going to go on CPU. The coach hasn't been around, so they picked George Montanez. Um, this is a, the third linebacker that I was high on in the first round. Overall, just a better balanced person. Um, he's slightly slower than uh, Blair. His tackling, I think, may be slightly better. Uh, he's got agility. He's got strength. He's not very bright, and his uh, endurance needs a lot of work. <clears throat> but this is a great pick. Uh, for Buffalo, um, and I, I, I would say you can see it. He can get into the backfield. He's a coverage linebacker, which is pretty amazing. I think he's also going to be a pretty good rusher as well. Um, I, I, I really like this. Montanez was the guy I was trying to hide my uh, interest in, um, only because I was hoping he would drop all the way down to where I drafted, but he didn't. Uh, New Orleans, this is kind of a meh one for me, but it's CPU. James Reed isn't a bad running back. Um, his hands, I don't like his hands at all, and I don't like his endurance, but 84 speed, 86 agility, 77 strength, that's that's pretty good. Um, he's definitely going to be a just every, day back, every down back if it wasn't for his endurance, uh, but he should have a decent career at New Orleans. Um, I just don't know he's worth the $5.6 million. And there were better running backs in the draft than him. Uh, Green Bay, again, is another CPU. Uh, this is a good pick, I think, uh, with Mark McManus. Um, he's someone I was high uh, out, of, out of North Texas. He's a technique-type blocker, I guess. I don't like his speed, um, but I I think for a run blocker, especially... Uh, if you're running off the edges, I think he's good enough. Um, I, I would almost move him to guard or think about moving him to guard because I think he'd be better there. But um, it's, a, it's a solid pick. He's worth the $5.4 million in my estimation. Um, we finally saw our first cornerback come off the board with Carolina. Um, Carolina also is a new coach. This is Invisible Witness. Um, I like Invisible. Again, great energy from him. Um, uh, I like this pick. The dude is speed. Um, and I, I think I when I did my big boards, I actually called him out as this guy is just pure speed. Uh, may not have the first best first cut. Uh, he's not going to tackle many people, but um, he's got great hands to boot. This is just a solid pick, and it, it's I think he's going to have a good career. Uh, you're not going to throw on him. And, and then you look at his personality. He's just solid across the board. This is a guy that we'd say Gary would love. Um, so great pick, Hill. Um, Tobias Moore, uh, tight end is just hard to draft. Uh, this is a CPU pick. This dude's strong. He's going to be a great run blocker. Uh, I, I really, really um, think that if you're looking, I think uh, Frankie compared him to Wiggins. Uh, well, if you're just asking him to block and you want to run block, oh, this is your dude. He's very few people are going to get past him. Uh, but if you're looking for him to be in the passing game, he may not be the best person. He's got serviceable hands, though. Uh, but that strength is just, that's a wow strength. I mean, if he was big, oh, I would just say move, his, move him over to be an offensive lineman. But he's not, so he would, it would take a long time before you could use him. But I, I would just, he's serviceable in a running attack, and you just don't send him down the field. Uh, or you do, and nobody's going to expect it because everybody's just going to think that all he can do is um, block. I'm high on Jacksonville's pick. Um, now, JC had to step away, unfortunately, wasn't able to make the pick uh, or star finder. Um, but I, I think Taysel Griffin's going to be a good one. Um, I think. Wow, he's already moving him to the defensive end. Uh, so he was a defensive tackle, but in fairness, he was a defensive end in college and got moved. He's out of Stanford. Uh, he's one of Skelter's people. So um, I like this pick. Uh, even if he had stayed at defensive tackle, I think he would have caused problems for centers and guards. He's got good speed. He's not the best tackle, uh, but he's got great strength too. So I, I think that even at defensive end, he's going to cause a lot of matchup problems, and Jacksonville got a pretty good guy in Taysel. Um, and a lot of people who've heard the other videos know I was high on him. I was kind of shocked to see Eric Carrero drop this low. Um, he was one of the guys I viewed as in the top five. Uh, he is a burner. 
uh, true to the word, 94 uh, speed, 95 agility. This guy, you got to keep him in front of you. If he gets behind you, you're probably going to regret that. His hands aren't great. His endurance isn't great. He is absolutely not a good person. Uh, but um, at 6'4", 204 pounds, you probably just drafted Plexico, uh, Burris, maybe not Randy Moss, but you drafted a guy who's just going to create matchup issues. And um, Shark, who's the coach of the Patriots, got a really good guy here, especially at 18. This is probably arguably what I would say is the best pick in the draft in the first round because of where he got him in the value. <clears throat> uh, Don Lucky has Philadelphia now. Uh, I like this pick. Um, I, I think uh, Asvaldo McKee is probably one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the draft. Again, decent speed, decent agility. His arm isn't great, but this is a guy who produced at Miami uh, and then was sat uh, for his last two years, but um, just a really good quarterback, especially if you build the system around him. He's clutch, as you can see, uh, and his stats show that that's, I mean, you're talking like almost 70% completion right there. And in, bear in mind, he only played two seasons. Uh, he was benched after his uh, sophomore season. So this is a guy who I think that you build the right system with short passes, medium passes, and maximize his accuracy. Number one, I think he could start day one in that system, and two, at $4.3 million, we're going to probably be talking about how good of a value that was. Uh, Prince has Denver. He took um, Joseph Clark. Uh, I like this pick as well. Jo I was high on Joseph Clark. He's one of the best mobile quarterbacks in the draft, um, and I think he's actually a dual threat, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, he had a decent career at Virginia. It's nothing to write home about, but at the same time, I, I think he's going to be this type of RPO quarterback that we may start seeing, and I, I think that he will have a very productive career. 78 arms, not great, but it's not bad either. It's, good, it's a good frame to develop into. It's got a decent accuracy that he can grow into. His speed is phenomenal. Um, I would like to see his hands be a little bit better. Uh, and he's smart, so this is a good pick, um, and especially with Lavelle, who's our current quarterback getting older. Uh, this is a guy who has a couple seasons to grow. Uh, it's kind of shocked to see um, uh, Amos Bennett fall this fall far. I thought he would go higher. His speed is actually less than what I thought it was, uh, but he's a decent cornerback, uh, He's got great agility. Um, his hands are really good. Again, his endurance could be better, but you, you can work on that. His intelligence, you can't really work on that. But um, I was high on this guy. Uh, I was kind of shocked to see him fall to pick 21. Um, you can see here 13 interceptions, three defensive touchdowns. Um, kind of was a little bit of shock, but uh, Tennessee, who is CPU, got a good one. Um, I like this next one. Um, even though I hate Ohio State, um, I, I think that Stewart, who's the San Francisco coach, got a really good wide receiver at the pick he was making at 22. Uh, good speed, actually slower than I thought he would be, but his hands are actually better than I thought they were. Uh, again, a concern is endurance, but you can work on that. But this guy is actually really good. He was really good at Ohio State. He was a guy I was concerned about because I thought he was a system-wide receiver out of Ohio State who throws the ball a lot. But 3,834 yards, 42 touchdowns, and I think he played like three or four years. That That's that's really strong, and he played in the Big Ten against uh, people like Maryland. And I will tell you, he gave me fits at Maryland trying to guard him. Uh, so, and I have very good cornerbacks, so he's, he's faced a high level of competition. It's a good pick. Uh, Kansas City's recently on CPU. Um, Dean Gary is, he's not bad, um, and it's a good pick. Uh, I think that there was a better guy out there that the computer could have taken, but at 87, he'll be able to guard tight ends, slot wide receivers, uh, play zone. He's got great hands. you got to worry about throwing the ball at him. Uh, his intelligence is really good, um, and then the agility is definitely there. So at $3.6 million a year, he is, he's in my mind a solid pick. Um, so we're getting now into the second half. Uh, a little controversy around the Minnesota pick. Um, 
and I'm not going to go into it. I, I do think that Enos is a good running back. Uh, some people may disagree with me, but the strength, agility, and speed, uh, and the fact that he's six foot tall, 209 pounds, I, I, I like this pick, and I, I think that um, it's someone that will turn out to be a pretty decent running back. Now, whether he stays at Minnesota or not, I don't know. At $3.5 million, he's a good pick. Now, I will I will strongly say he's not one of the better running backs in this draft. Um, he's solid. Uh, at pick 24, he's not horrible. But there were better running backs to be had. Uh, so um, I'll leave it there. Uh, and then, of course, we had another trade happen where Kev moved up. Uh, he wanted to get a cornerback. He got a he got a pretty solid cornerback in Ruben Sorensen. Maybe not one of the best, but he's solid. His speed will allow him to cover a lot of wide receivers and tight ends. Uh, he's got good hands. Uh, not great. His agility is good. Um, he's someone that I was pretty high on. He's out of Oklahoma State. But as Frankie said, Frankie didn't even like the dude. Uh, so whenever a college coach says, I didn't like that guy, uh, you may think about that, but this is a good solid pick. Um, the AFC North, uh, I think like the average speed for a lot of the wide receivers in the AFC North is probably somewhere around 85 to 88. So this guy's going to be able to cover them. He just may have to worry about some of the ones at like Cincinnati who are like 92 or 94, uh, but good pick though. Uh, San Diego was up next. This was also one of our newer coaches. Um, I believe this is, if I remember correctly, is Alan, uh, who is out of Germany. Um, and uh, just a quick side note, he actually lived 20 kilometers away from where I lived in Germany. Because uh, I, I lived in um, Offenbach. Uh, and he's right now there, so that, that's cool. And he actually knew the town I mentioned, which is even more amazing. Uh, Germany's not a small country, by the way. But uh, he chose David Meehan. The, all feelings aside about how he played for me at Maryland, this is a good pick. Uh, the guy's strong. He's got a good frame. He's going to grow into his blocking skills. He's got the guard skill to do it. He's got the work ethic, the competitive file. There's a lot of things to like about this guy. Um, I know I've kind of downplayed him a little bit just because I was disappointed with how he played for me at Maryland. But in fairness to him, and I think I mentioned this last night, I did put him on my running side and Batiste just lifted and was a great running back. And one of the reasons why was Meehan. Uh, so, yeah, his pass blocking, run blocking are in the 70s, but you can grow that. And his strength is near elite. So it's a good pick. Um, I like this pick. Uh, this next pick, I'm not as big of a fan of. Um, I think that Zavala was someone I was not high on um, at all. And it's one of those where I'm kind of like I'm happy I didn't. I was right about him, but I'm sad that Templar picked him. Uh, he's he's going to be decent, um, uh, I think, over time. Again, if you put him in the right system, will you maximize his strength uh, in his hands? He'll, he'll be solid. I don't think he's going to be a starter in the league. Um, I could be proved wrong. And again, we don't know how these guys are going to develop and grow. He could grow quite nicely. So not the best pick there, but... Um, we'll see how that, play, how that plays out. Uh, there was another, this was part of the original uh, Jets move uh, to, I'm sorry, this was a different one, but um, Hong Williams is someone that I'm high on. Uh, Jay Starfinder moved up to get him, uh, and I think this is a solid pick. His agility is amazing, um, and his speed is good. Uh, he's got pretty good hands to build off. Um, I, I would say that this is a guy you can stick in the slot, um, and he will do really big wonders for you and create a nightmare for linebackers, free safeties, and even some of the cover safeties because of his agility. Um, and he had a good career at Nevada, so this was a good a good pick, and it was even better that the, he did the trade to get him. Uh, Lorenzo Sasso is uh, one of the defensive ends I was really high on. I'd love to speed out of college. Um, so I was happy to see he was generally where I thought he was. He's a great tackler. Uh, he's got good strength. His agility is a little bit lower than I would have liked to seen. 
But I think that this is a guy out of Oregon that is going to be a pretty good player for the Rams, who are CPU, by the way. Uh, he had 34 sacks. Uh, the only thing worrying about is when someone gets drafted in the horrible uh, morale, you just got to work on that. Um, the next pick was Pittsburgh. I'll be candid. I struggled with this one. I almost chose the person that the Raiders chose at 32. Uh, but I kind of need a running back, a speed running back. Um, and this was a hard choice between Alex Taft uh, and Michael Lackey. I decided to go with Lackey because after I saw scouting, I thought he might be slightly better. Uh, Joey's still out because, of course, Taft hasn't been drafted. And it's kind of a shock that he's dropped into the second round. Uh, but I, I like who I got here. Um, his agility is pretty good. He's not all that strong, but I'm not looking for him to be. Uh, he's got good speed. His hands are some of the better ones I've seen so far in the running backs. Uh, so this is a guy who I'll be able to start day one, and he'll complement the running backs I have pretty well. So I'm, I'm happy with this pick. Uh, Detroit Pops wasn't able to make it, so we uh, selected Jose Scales for him because uh, he needed a cornerback. Um, Scales is someone I was really high on. Um, and I'm glad to see that his speed was about right, his agility was right. Uh, the only concern I have with him is his hands and his intelligence, but this is a guy who could start day one. And at pick 31, where you're paying $2.8 million, he's amazing. Um, and then, of course, we go to Peter, who never disappoints with his picks. Uh, Peter chose James Major, another Miami guy. This is like the third Miami guy, by the way. Uh, this guy's just solid. I like this pick. Um, I, I always hate when he picks uh, solid players, but as a tackle, you could you could insert him day one or move him to guard. He's going to be a really solid player. Got great strength. He's a really good pass blocker, which is something Peter wants. Um, his run blocking will only get better, uh, and he's got the speed and agility that you want to see in a tackle. So this is just a, I like this one. He, and he's a tenacious blocker, which just helps even more. So that's kind of the recap. Now, if we look forward to uh, where we are, and good, it's not showing mine because I don't want to give away my picks. Um, if we look at who's remaining, uh, and I'm just going to go through this quickly. So, guys, I would be looking at in the second round. Uh, cornerback, quarterback, uh, I know I'm going to get yelled at again for this, but I'm going to keep stressing this, is I think that there are multiple quarterbacks you could take in the second round, even though they're showing up as late rounders. Uh, Steve Molo is someone that Frankie mentioned. Um, I'm trying to be careful because I'm trying to remember if I've scouted the person or not. Uh Bradford Castellano is someone I've talked about who I think is going to be good as well. Uh, Jimmy Milligan is another one. I know Stewart's probably going, stop it. No more Jimmy Milligan. Uh, Ronald McCulloch is the guy from Central Florida I mentioned who we all thought was going to be a first rounder. Uh, I, I think if you can look past potentially his arm, he's a good quality pick in the second or third round. Um, if we go to running back, um, I think that Alex Taft is just shocked that he's still on the board. This is a guy who I'm high on. I said I know it says round three, but I think you're going to find very few running backs as good as Alex. Uh, he was really good at NC State, uh, coached by Van. Uh, so definitely want to take a look at him. I've mentioned Johnny Watson before, but the other guy you, you want to kind of look at is John Kong out of uh, Auburn, Tyson DeVito out of Louisiana Monroe. Tyson DeVito, I think, may arguably be one of the fastest people in the draft. I just think that he's a straight line runner. And what that means is that don't ask him to cut. Just get him out to the side and let him run straight up the field. Uh, the other guy to keep an eye on is Kevin Batiste. He's last year's Heisman Trophy winner, and he had a very productive career at Maryland. I think he dropped because of his size. But this is a guy who averaged like 1,500 to 2,000 yards at Maryland playing in the Big Ten and had a very good career both as a receiver and a running back. Uh, so you might want to keep an eye on him. And I just like Kong because of his size. I I think he's got decent speed. I think he's strong. But at 6'2", 224, that's a type of running back you want to take a look at because uh, his size is going to be a big factor. Uh, from four backs, uh, 
again, Chester Spears, who I'd look at. I think it's too early to go outside of Chester Spears, but uh, you could look at Eddie McFadden or Anthony Shepard as well. Um, from a guard perspective, there's still a couple here that are pretty good. Roger McKnight, Eric Whittacle, uh are people I would take a look at. Um, Hector Warner, I think, is another guy I'm high on, if I remember correctly, and Troy Meeks. Um, but the the guard pool's drying up pretty fast. Johnny Frick is a guy I would look at as well. Um, from a tackle perspective, Alexander Armstrong is a shock that he's still on the board. Uh, he's very raw, but he's got strength that's probably next to none. A uh, little shock that Kevin Warrior is still on the board. Uh, Roger Burkett, Robert James, all those guys are going to be decent. Paul Walker was someone that Frankie mentioned that I, I think you probably should take a, take a look at. Romeo Thierio out of Oregon is another guy. Um, Daniel Nequin is another guy that I would take a look at if you're drafting in the second or third round. Uh, at Central, the big ones are still on the board. There wasn't a Central take. And so Charles Ramsey, I'm really high on. So same with Tyler Hilton. Uh, Arthur Zink is someone that Frankie mentioned, who I, I think I would agree with that. Uh, Alan Bobo is another one out of Virginia Tech. Uh, all should be decent picks. The best tight ends in my eyes haven't come off the board yet. Uh, if you're looking for the uh, pass option, it's Sam King or Nick Bowden. Uh, UNLV in Maryland. I think Thomas Stewart is pretty good, if I remember correctly, based on what I scouted. Uh, Billy Craig is another guy I would take a look at. Um, from a wide receiver perspective, uh, there are a couple good options still out there. So if you're looking for a wide receiver, Richard Morgan is a guy I'm kind of shocked dropped into the second round. Uh, Timothy Reddy, I think, has some of the best hands I've ever seen. I don't think he's fast, though. Uh, Les Jackson's another guy I'm pretty high on. Trinidad Taylor, I know that Frankie mentioned him. I'm pretty high on David DeMarco uh, as well. So I think you can still find a couple guys here that are pretty good. Darren Hill is someone that the CPU is pretty high on. Um, from a cornerback perspective, uh, it's starting to dry up. Um, I still think that there are a couple guys in Hill. Uh, but I don't think you're going to find the type of speed that you saw in the ones drafted in the first round. Maybe take a look at David William out of Penn State. Archie Solis is another guy. David Leslie. I, I think Dominic Keynes doesn't have great speed, but I think he's he's going to be able to guard um, in the slot uh, pretty well. Um, but those would be the guys I would be looking at for the second round if you're looking to get a cornerback. Um there's one other guy, and I just I hate that I can't remember his name. But um, if I remember what I'll put it in the next video. Uh, linebacker, again, drying up. Uh, the, the best linebackers have largely been taken in my eyes. Um, and what you're going to have now is guys who are in the 70 in speed, maybe 80s in tackling, which isn't bad, right? Uh, but if you're looking for faster linebackers, there aren't many left. I'd look at Elmo Washington. Um, Jim Major, I think, is decent. I, I get mixed vibes on him. I'm, I On one hand, I think that he's good. On the other hand, I just don't know how good he is. Uh, David Sweet, someone that uh, Frankie mentioned um, that he liked as well. And then, um, I, I hate saying it, but I'm going to say it. Sean Cunningham is a guy I would look at. I, I think he's got speed. Uh, if you're looking for a speed guy, I think he's the last one that has really that high level of speed that you might be looking for. Um, there's a guy in Pittsburgh I kind of equate him to, which is like Juan, Juan Finley, I think is his name, uh, who is fast, but he's growing into being a linebacker because he wasn't a linebacker previously. Uh, defensive tackle, I think you can still find value here. There weren't a lot of them taken. I think um, Taysor Griffin was the only one taken. John Haley is someone I'm pretty high on. Uh, I would also look at potentially... Um, uh, Melquan Smith out of Clemson. Uh, Leggett, I think, is going to be decent. Uh, Keith Covey, anytime you see Louisiana Monroe, take a look at him because Skelter is a phenomenal judge of, of talent. Uh, the only thing you got to be careful of is Skelter is a phenomenal judge of talent who moves them around a lot, and it may take them a season or two to grow into their um, skill. Uh, defensive end, I think there's a lot of great options still here. There weren't a lot taken. Wall Larry Wallace, I'm high on. I'm high, very high on Michael Perry. 
Uh, Jack Snead, I think, again, a Louisiana Monroe guy, I think he's going to be really good. Uh, there are other guys like Ahmad Alexander, who is uh, pretty good as well. Um, so I, I think you can still find value in this second and third round and get a good defensive end. Uh, safeties, you're going to find a lot of good safeties. There weren't any taken. So um, I was a little shocked by that. But again, when I went back and looked at the depth charts, I now understand why there were lot, not a lot of safeties taken. A lot of people have them. Uh, Charles Browning, I think, is really phenomenal. I think McDowell's phenomenal uh, from a safety. Let me caveat, as a safety. Um, these are coverage guys, if I'm not mistaken. Rafferty is someone I'm high on. I'm high on Jason Lloyd. Uh, and um, I, I would look at those guys. I, I think any one of them or someone who could start or be a quality backup. Strong safety, I'm a little shocked to see McGee is still here from Miami. Uh, I thought he would go in the first round. He's probably, I, I say Ed Reed, but I think uh, Frankie's right that he's more like Troy Palomano. Uh, of course, I'm a Pittsburgh fan, so I, I, I love that analogy. But I, I think that he's more right about that. Uh, Nicholas Wolf is another good, uh, strong safety. Trent Anderson's in the same boat. Um, and then I think Brian Maracruin out of Boston College is another guy I would take a look at. Uh, don't pick a kicker in the second round. Just don't. Um, but if you're going to, if I remember correctly, uh, Ricardo Coco is a decent look. Um, but I like Stuart Taylor if you're going to take a kicker anytime. I would take Taylor because I think he's the better of them. I don't think that there's a punnel worth taking. Um, the kid from Western Michigan's decent, uh, Dominguez, uh, but generally just stay away from punnels. You can get a better one in free agency. Um, so that's kind of what's left. Uh, of course, uh, second round runs on Monday at eight. Uh, we're already seeing trades, people trying to move up to get at some of these people. Um, overall, I think the first round was good. I don't think we saw as many busts as we've seen in the past. Um, and I think that um, the quality level of the first round picks was still. Um, I do like some of them better than others. Um, and I think I mentioned a couple of the ones I really, really like. Like, um, I love the pick at two with Wilmore Alvarez. Um, I, I, I like New York's. I, I'm going to argue with, I, I'll argue with DP. I don't think he needed to take a running back this high, but he went for it. Terrell Bryant, you're not going to get much better than him. I think in the long run, I think Ricky Mollis and Peyton Goodwin, if they build the right system, I think we're going to be talking about them. I love the pick of Eric Eugene Tejada. Uh, I love the pick of Alex Stone. Uh, I really like George Montanez where he went. I think that was a good value pick. Uh, I think Carolina got a good value pick in Alexander Beretta at 15. Uh, I do like Taysel Griffin. It's pick at 17. Um, I think Shark got the steal of the first round uh, at 18 with Eric Herrera. Um, great job there. I like Don's pick of Osvaldo McKee again, like the other two I mentioned. If you build the right system, I think he's good. I think in the long run, Joseph Clarkson would be a great pick for Denver. Um, he's got time to develop. So, And then, uh, of course, um, I really like I, – I do like the pick of Meehan by San Diego. That, that was a good pick. Um, I also think that uh, JC had a pretty good first round. He came back and got Hong Williams. Uh, and that just was a really good second pick in the thing, in the draft. Uh, and then I, I really like Peter's drafting of James Major. Uh, I was high on him. Uh, and I like Jose Scales as well, but um, I, I think that there was a lot of good value, especially late in the round, and people maximized it. I I, I don't think that there were as many busts. Um, the tight ends, I, I, I would argue that the tight ends that probably should have went in the first round are the ones that didn't go in the first round. But again, you always got to be a little careful when you're drafting in the first round someone who's projected as a late round. Um, I, I will tell you that I think Batiste... If you're looking for a running back, is someone you really should look at. But Taft's still on the board. If you if you go past Taft, then you need a running back. I think you're you're going to regret it later. Um, so there's still a lot of good players left. Uh, looking forward to seeing what happens in the second round. Thanks everyone for last night. 
Uh, it was definitely a great experience. I would love to figure out how to do a draft where I can get everybody on, but we have people in Germany, and it just kind of makes it a little hard. Uh, but everyone, thank you for the vibe last night. It was very positive. It was great interaction, and um, it went a little bit longer than Frankie and I wanted it to with two and a half hours, but it was just great. So thanks, everyone, and I'm going to go ahead and call this. I'll put the links if you want to join. It's a great league, got great new coaches, got great coaches that have been around for a while. I'm going to try to go find some of the older coaches and bring them back. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to this season. The draft uh, just showed that we're going to have a pretty good competitive year this year. So thank you, and have a great day.